Shamai and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee at the show where we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the other markets you may be affecting it. The price is at $7,938, it's up 1.45%, to the high of $8,018 and low of $7,762. We seem to be bouncing between $7,450 and $7,950, so that, that's sort of a $500 price range here. It seems to be bouncing between that for the past month. Um, that's where the price wants to be. Uh, if we look at the chart, um, it's quite easy to kind of get nervous, but there's so much bullish um, fundamental FOMO in news going on at the moment. I don't know why it would be bearish. And also, if we would kind of turn the chart upside down and back to front, which I like to do, and we just imagine this was going downward, um, then this would very much look like just a little, you know, blip up, a little um, bull trap before, uh, not even a bull trap, just like a little dead cat bounce before we continue to, to go down. So the same is true on the upside. We're still in very much in a bull market. Um, in the, the news and fundamentals which are out at the moment, um, I think are gonna spur on a, a massive parabolic run. But obviously I may be wrong. I'm feeling incredibly bullish at the moment. I think maybe I've had too much coffee. Um, um, I have been wrong before. I'm, you know, I'm in that sort of mood where you wanna sell everything you own and buy Bitcoin, but I'm not gonna, because you can lose all your money. So be careful. Um, Let's have a look at the news feed, shall we? So, major European Bitcoin exchange closes its doors. So, I'll have to have a look at that. I don't know which, which one they're talking about. Could this be a uh, Bitcoin solution? Blah, blah, blah. Um, number of reachable nodes almost unchanged from a year ago, reveals analysis. Um, Mark Arpelis clarifies this business isn't a blockchain, isn't blockchain based. Okay, so there may have been some just some hype within the Bitcoin news outlets that so are not the best. Um, that's good. I'm glad that he's not. Um, that he's trying to find something else, something different. He's clearly not quite out for this industry, I don't think. Um, blah blah blah. Apple and Facebook now competing with banks, not Bitcoin. So I suppose I mean they're proprietary banks, are proprietary, so they're in direct competition. Bitcoin being non-proprietary, free and open source. Um, I've had this thing in the past few days where I've been imagining Bitcoin as a free market killer, like. You have this, so think of Wikipedia, like you have encyclopedias and they have Wikipedia and it's sort of had FOSS, you know, whatever. Um, uh, and you just can't compete with it. So it ends up destroying the free markets of encyclopedias. And the same could be said of like Linux, you know, web servers or whatever. Um, uh, it's free and open source. It's so accessible. It's so good. There's so much talent pouring time into the project that you, you can't really compete with it. So it, it just consumes the market. And then Bitcoin's the same, like, yeah, it's free, a free market money, technically, but I think we all wanted to consume the free market of money. So um, and I think it probably will as well, because that's where all the talent is, and that's really where, you know, the, the innovation is. So, um, yeah, I kind of, well, why did they go on that rant? Yeah, so, yeah, so it's non-proprietary fast money, so, yeah, it's not competing with Bitcoin, I guess. They're competing with each other while, while Bitcoin continues to just smash them all. Is there a Zucker born every minute, Facebook's crypto... Um, about to find out. So, this is the Zuck Buck story. Um, so, not only, only if we got Jack Dorsey, obviously he's a Bitcoin, a cypherpunk, chilling Bitcoin, which is incredible. You know, Twitter's a thing which got Donald Trump in, like elected. Um, he, uh, we also ha now have uh, Mark Zuckerberg, um, the the biggest social network platform on the planet. And, and what's more important is, you know, there's a lot of Twitter users. We all use Twitter, um, who are very Bitcoin friendly. Uh, Facebook is full of people who spend all their day on Facebook and they're not that Bitcoin friendly. A lot of Bitcoiners don't use Facebook. Um, so it would be cool for uh, all those people to now be in contact with a, a, a Bitcoin, a cheap knockoff Bitcoin, and then inevitably they will compare it with Bitcoin and think, well, why why are they trying to imitate this thing? You know, what, well, What's so important about this, this thing? Is Bitcoin maybe better? And they'll be comparing it. Um, we're going to look at that, uh, an article on that in, in, in a bit, I think. Bitcoin be, could be a good hideout if trade tensions persist. So Bitcoin doesn't seem to be correlated to the markets or, or gold as well. So gold and the markets seem to be correlated at the moment. Bitcoin doesn't seem to be. So it's a good hedge against the markets. Um, and then also it's going up. So yeah, it should be part of everyone's portfolio, I think. Let's, so, what, so what was this major European Bitcoin exchange closes this door? Um, let's have a little look. On Crypto Daily... Money PL received an email from its readers. Uh, what's, what's the what's the where is it? Um, 
major European cryptocurrency exchange based in Poland called Coin Room. Never heard of it. So apparently this is a major cryptocurrency exchange in Poland, uh, Coin Room. Uh, they've closed their doors. Sorry if anyone's had any problems and lost their money. That that's sad. Um, but yeah. I think all these exchanges are going to have to close their doors at some point and make way for the decentralized hodl hodl, you know, BISC, BISC networks because they're far more um, technically superior. Let's have a look at Litecoin's price, shall we? So at Litecoin's at $114, had a high of $115 and low of $109.8. It's um, decoupled temporarily from Bitcoin, which is quite nice. Plucky little Litecoin. So yesterday I said it hit the bottom of that upward channel and then it's bounced off that, which I said was going to happen. Um, I think it might even still, still go up to like $120 probably, um, uh, or maybe like 100 yeah, $120 and then probably drop down to like 110 or something um, as it con continues in that channel. So so clearly the traders saw that sort of bullish signal and they bought, bought Litecoin and pushed the price up. Uh, but if you compare it, it's just temporarily, it's, it's decoupled, which is quite nice. Good for, good for Litecoin. Ethereum's at $246.9, uh, $247 should we say. It's at a high of 252.2 and a low of 244.4. It's flat. Um, in that same respect that Litecoin went up, it could be argued that we've got like something of a descending triangle which is being formed here. I mean, it, it really is just like mimicking Bitcoin's price um, badly. So um, that's why it's formed that descending triangle. But whether or not traders, you know, trade on that and then dump Bitcoin dump um, Ethereum and push the price down, we'll see. If they do that happen over the next like 12, 24 hours or something, I imagine. Um, Monero, Monero's just, Monero's just copying Bitcoin, look at that. Just copycatting, um, like a fuzzy version of Bitcoin, which people may find value in. So the price of Monero is $87.7, it's had a high of $88.5 and a low of $85.5. Let's have a look at gold. Gold is, um, yep, yeah, really popping up at the moment. Uh, let's go out to like a five year, let's do a crazy long term look, shall we? So, since 2013, yeah, about this time, 2013, so well, like six years ago, um, gold has struggled to get past uh, 1,400, um, well, 1,000, yeah, 1,380, really. Um, uh, every time it's kind of got close to that price, it's hit it, and then it's tapped out and it's dropped. Um, it could be argued that on uh, like a, a three-year timeline here, we've got something of an ascending triangle forming. Um, I mean, there could be a, a very good argument made for that. It looks like those prices are, are, those movements are becoming less. And if we look, if we zoom in to this most recent bull run, it's been very, it's a very steep bull run. And then um, historically, when it's had these these uh, runs, then it's it's added an extra like 60% on top of the bull run. So if it adds an extra 60% on top of there, then we are talking about that price of 2000 and, uh, 2013. So, and if it can break through that price range, if we can break through 1,380, 1,400, then um, yeah, bets are off. You know, it could go, it could 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 surpass its all-time high here. Um, so uh, yeah, pretty bullish on gold, I would say, um, on a, on a long-term time frame. If we zoom in on the short term. It's, this doesn't like it's going to stop anytime soon, and we're going to get that extra fuzz plonked on top. We should push it past the um, the, the last highs. But there's going to be a lot of a lot of sell pressure at the top there, so we'll see if it manages to break through. Shall we? Let's check the news feed. So, um, could gold no I'll bother with that? Gold, uh, gold, um, gold price prediction. Gold price continues to rally as ECB provides dovish outlook. Um, so we've got the um, the reason Bit gold has Bitcoin. The reason gold has gone up so much is because of the the trade tariff tension uh, news, and then just very recently, I think in the past few hours, the um, job report thing has come out in the US, and that's pretty poor. So that means the markets aren't doing so well, um, which means that you know again buy gold. So that's going to push the price up. So I think so gold, yeah, that's that's probably why gold looks like it's going up now. Um, Let's have a look at the S&P 500. Like, so, okay, so here we are. We've got a bit of negative correlation here. From that report, the uh, S&P has dropped. But then, I mean, it's only temporary because the, the Gov will fiddle, it, fiddle the, um, the upward momentum by doing a Fed rate cut, which could help support the markets. We have also got the trade tariff stuff going on with Trump. So, 
Um, we'll see how all that works out, shall we? Uh, let's have a look at the Bitcoin uh, Reddit. So yeah, the Lightning Hack Day Munich, brilliant, fantastic. Uh, watch those videos if you haven't watched them. This is pretty funny, we should probably watch this. It's only like a minute. So keep watching, this is the best bit now. Brilliant. So that Bitcoin ATM is so disgusted at the shitcoin toilet paper it's got inside of it, it's, it's regurgitating fear all over the floor um, on Bond Street in London, so that's pretty cool, it's pretty funny. Someone's having a bad day there, there's someone who controls these bit, you know, manages these Bitcoin ATMs, he's having a right nightmare. Um, but for all those guys, it's great. Warren Buffett who claims that Bitcoin is a gambling device with a lot of frauds connected to it, loses 340 million in a Ponzi scheme. So, um, he's, you know, Warren Buffett's designed for the legacy system, which he could kind of take advantage of those legacy financial structures. If he liked Bitcoin, then that would be worrying. Um, yeah, but Bitcoin is new and hard for him to kind of understand. Um, he has some cracking one line, don't get me wrong, like, you know, the one line at the beginning of this video, you know, be patient. You know, if you buy and hold Bitcoin, then you know probably in five years you'll be rich that's just probably you will because that's what's happened for the you know every five years even less every three years um uh if you try and trade bitcoin then you'll probably lose all your money um so just buy and hold so he's got some cracking one-liners you know he's a wise old dude but he's not designed for this modern world i don't think um so the chart shows that bitcoin has never entered a bear market um don't really get it. I think I get it. Oh, it's, it's, I think it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> um, SHA-256 blockchain's current status. So you've got Bitcoin uh, um, uh, compared to uh, Bcash and Bullshit Verified. Uh, it's just showing hash rates. Pretty cool uh, graphic there. I like that. Um, blah, blah, blah. Komodo successfully prevents the theft of $30 million worth of Bitcoin in Komodo uh, by hacking its own customers. So yeah, if you trust a third party with your um, money with your stuff then in their benevolence they may you know work in your benefit and keep your funds safe for you but on the reverse of that they're just as likely to take the funds it probably on a game theoretical perspective would have made, probably made more sense for Komodo just to take your money I guess um, so you're lucky they didn't but you shouldn't trust anyone with your, your keys obviously um why do don't you run a node please help us understand and create better node solutions so yeah this is very important running a node is a massive pain in the ass um and then when people because off you know often i use like custodian stuff for some of my work um particularly if i'm like onboarding like someone duty owns a coffee shop down the road or whatever um and uh my argument is always like you know how likely is that guy going to be to run his own web server how likely is he going to be to run his own like you know email server so how likely is it going to that he's going to run his own money server so yeah we need to make these nodes so easy that people like that that it will be easy for them to run nodes and they're more likely to run nodes but i still think there's like a case for how finney talked about it back in the day you know like he thought that bitcoin could be like a standard a settlement layer and then banks would you know use it to trade with just because of the scaling issues but now we've got lightning um we can use bitcoin directly uh I still think there's going to be some sort of custodial stuff out there, and that's okay, you know, if you're willing to take that security. Just like when you pay for someone to host your website, um, rather than you, you know, trying to host it yourself, the likelihood is it's probably, for some people, more secure, because, you know, running your own web server is pretty hard, and keeping it secure is pretty hard, uh, whereas these big companies can do that. Um, uh, so, yeah, for some people, that's fine. Um, but obviously, you know, if you're, if you're storing a large amount of money, then obviously store those keys yourself. It's a security trade-off, letting someone else store your money. Um, but absolutely, work, you know, setting up, making it easier, nodes easier to run, nodes easier, easier to implement, um, um, will be greatly appreciated. But I think as, you know, hardware gets um, so much better, um, it's also going to make running nodes incredibly easy. Um, I just ordered uh, an Odroid to run um, the Thundroid project on, so looking forward to when that comes. That's a pretty cool node project. So the Bitcoin white paper presented on glass, engraved on glass. That's pretty sweet. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, so there's a thing here about lightning. So someone's concerned about the no dropping nodes or channels. Um, so many of these nodes are going 
dark uh you know just when i go to like uh the lightning hack days or whatever you see all these people running those up through tour and um more and more of that's going to happen because it's becoming easier to implement so uh more of these nodes are going to go dark so look you know as if the lightning network is is either shrinking or i don't think it's gonna you know you'll, there'll still be an obvious visible network um but it, it'll probably be you know a small fraction of the actual size of the network which is out there so that's pretty cool um so bitcoin mining difficulty hits all-time high so uh so is price next yeah, so this is interesting. So um, difficulty rating and um, hash rate are all-time highs. Transaction volume is really high. I don't think it's an all-time high, but it's really high. Um, and it's we often talk about Bitcoin being undervalued and like some ICO being overvalued. Um, that would imply that maybe price isn't the only barometer of value. So um, a lot of people in Bitcoin, particularly of the Austrian school, like to say that bit price is, you know, that's, that's how much something is valued as. Um, I think that you know, value is incredibly difficult um, uh, thing to, to 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 you know to sort of summarize you, and a difficult concept. So I think there's many measures of value, and I think that um, hash rate in Bitcoin is one of those measures. And I think hash rate being on all time high um, means that probably price will follow. Uh, so I think that you know price is like it's, it does represent value, but it's like a fuzzy representation of value. You've got distortions in the markets there, which cause the value to go up and down, blah blah blah. And whales pumping the bags and blah blah blah. Um, but the, the, obviously, d discovering the true value of something has been something people have been debating about for thousands of years. How do you do that? Um, price is probably one of the best tools we have. Uh, but but with Bitcoin, we also have this thing called hash rate, which we can look at too. Um, and I would say that, that that's probably a truer representation so all these people having faith in bitcoin um from all the the good news and all the information which is out there um i, I trust those people those technical people more probably than i would trust like the people who are just trading bitcoin so yeah it's interesting i don't know um a bit of a rant there uh so let's have a look at um next article here so india's crypto uh, ban draft bill suggests 10-year jail term for those dealing cryptocurrencies this looks a bit doom and gloomy for india a bit of fud but i would say um draft bill suggests uh so there are plenty of draft bills written by completely in six and they don't get anywhere um and it's suggesting a 10-year uh, jail term doesn't mean that a jail term so the, even if the draft bill got through a suggestion of a 10-year jail term You'll probably get reduced to nothing you know six months three months or whatever um and i know india are looking into making their own electronic because there's something about this electronic rupee thing um so um it could be a bit like facebook like try banning all cryptocurrency ads while they're working on their own cryptocurrency you know control so forbes bitcoin and crypto now to be supported by apple's new ios 13 so unofficially um supported because apple are very much saying this is just for cryptography obviously their biggest competitor samsung brought the s10 which has got um the ability to store private keys on and when you've got things like the zuck bucks and the rupee coin or whatever else and bitcoin um people are going to want safer ways to store their private keys on their phones so um yeah the iphone crypto kit was a kind of tool set for for helping people store cryptographic keys um and I imagine, you know, obviously, it'll make storing Bitcoin keys better on, on a phone, on a phone device. So here you have, you've got the two biggest phone manufacturers in the world becoming Bitcoin friendly. You've got the two biggest social networks on the planet um, being Bitcoin or cryptocurrency friendly. Um, uh, and this, these are just the foundations. You know, this stuff hasn't quite been developed yet and hasn't quite come to fruition yet, but it, it will and uh, the uh, the price will reflect um, as will the hash rate and as will the difficulty rating etc etc um, Facebook's radical Bitcoin beating cryptocurrency plans revealed so here's an article in uh, Forbes um, um, uh, claiming that Facebook's cryptocurrency is going to be some competition to Bitcoin which I don't think it will uh, Bitcoin-esque cryptocurrency um, so you have to like um, pay like 10 million dollars and you have to be approached by Facebook and then uh, you, you can then run a node so it's more of a federated system um, they also in this article they said they're gonna have like uh, physical ATM machines where you can buy Facebook here we are uh, physical ATM well, I assume that the, the writer for Forbes has done their um, due diligence here physical ATM machines for buying Zuckbox um, 
so yeah, here's the thing about um, the people being charged $10 million to run a node. Um, global coins, I think it's going to be called Global Coin, not Zuckbox. It should be called Zuckbox. Um, originally, I think it was called Libra, but I think there's probably a shit coin called Libra Coin. So, um, so yeah, interesting. So all these people who go on Facebook and don't care about Bitcoin are suddenly going to be discussing Bitcoin. And I think that's fascinating. Well, they're going to be discussing Zuckbox. And then people inevitably, the one or two people who use Facebook, you may have some idea of what Bitcoin is, might, you know, Google some videos, watch some Andreas videos and come back and start preaching Bitcoin at them. So could be could have a big um, network viral effect through Facebook, I think. Uh, particularly, I mean, even people who run, work, use Facebook, um, people who use Facebook, they don't trust Facebook. They don't like Facebook as a company. They just use it because it's there and they've used it and it's got their, their photos on the photos of their kids and stuff. So if they now have this currency, which like, you know, they don't trust Facebook, they, this, this currency they're going to be, or this, this value transfer they're going to be using, they're, they're not going to trust it. They'll probably still use it, but they're not going to trust it. Um, so they will be open to discussing alternatives, I imagine. Anyway, rant over. Have a lovely Friday. Um, I'm not going to be here tomorrow because I'm taking the weekend off. Uh, and I shall see you on Monday. So, ta-ta.